like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, brilliant, brilliant business owners and professionals and um, they're, they're hiding still on their visibility. And, mm. and this is at, at multiple levels, right? Like they can be a five figure, they can be a six figure, they can be a multiple six figure and yet still hiding in some respect. of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm your host, Shay Wheat, and I'm excited to bring um, our guest today because Melanie and I have been in each other's worlds for a little while now. I've been a part of some of the things that she's doing and the amazing people that she's attracting into her world. I'm super excited that she's now on the podcast here because this woman, let me just tell you, Melanie Benson, she is the hands down authority amplifier and really this person that is like a possibility igniter for expertpreneurs. Now she shows us how we can really generate million dollar visibility. And in today's world, visibility is king. So since 2000, Melanie has a proven track record of accelerating results for her clients. She's the host of the top 1.5% podcast, Amplify Your Success, is the author of Rewired for Wealth, and Entrepreneur.com Startup Guide for Starting an Information Marketing Business. She's also been featured in Authority Magazine, Bloomberg Business Week, Women's Day and Parenting. Please help me welcome Melanie to the Creating Powerful Impact stage. How are you? Ooh, I'm good. <laughs> I feel like we needed like a, a standing ovation or some kind of like, you know, applause. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> wonderful introduction. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Well, I'm I'm excited because visibility is is huge for anybody in business. And when you start to say million dollar visibility, I can kind of start to feel a lot of our audience going, uh, I don't know if I, I want million dollar visibility and how much is that going to cost and what does that entail and what does that actually mean and how am I supposed to show up differently and all the things. <laughs> so yeah. would you share with us like what what is that in the first place? What does that mean? What does that mean for us in business? Hmm. Great question. You know, I see million dollar visibility as the effect of us really stepping into the spotlight with a magnetic message that's meant to impact the lives of millions, which feels so appropriate for this podcast and this conversation on your show. But the million dollar piece comes in from the place of how do you create visibility that's actually not just impact driven, but revenue boosting? And one of the biggest pain points, one of the biggest complaints I hear from a lot of people who are actively out there as a guest expert, they're recognizing being a guest on other people's platforms, there's value in that for my visibility strategy. But the number one complaint is, but it's not doing anything for my business. It's mm. not making me any money. It's not helping me attract clients. It's not turning on that avalanche of opportunity the way I was told it would. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's a, uh, a um, infrastructure, if you will, a, a strategic dis intentionality that's missing for a lot of people who are going into that strategy. So I teach people how to create million dollar visibility that yes, is making this great impact in the communities they wanna serve, but it's also driving revenue and results for their business. Yeah. So it's, it, I mean, essentially starting with the end in mind, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at events where it's like, what is the, what is the end result? What are we wanting to do? What is the purpose and intention of doing an event or hosting something? You're, you're saying kind of the same thing where it's like, what are we, why are we doing this in the first place? How are we looking to create impact? And then how are we utilizing that visibility to support us in moving our missions forward? Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I, I believe that our message is um, it's like the, the knock on the door, right? It's like, it, what, what's what it's what opens up curiosity, desire, and, and, and need in a way. 
And that message can be conveyed on a live stage, which you so brilliantly help people facilitate, but it can also be um, presented in a virtual environment, a virtual event, a, a podcast, an online show. And by bringing like what I call your authentic authority into the message and to be able to learn to leverage that microphone in a way that's not just like, yes, we want to create a really awesome conversation because I want you to get great golden nuggets as you're listening in today. But I also want to inspire you to want more for your business, for your life, to be able to um, potentially say, yes, I want more. And that to me is the power. It starts with the right message. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what, where do we go? Where do we start? How do we actually start creating this million dollar visibility? Mm -hmm. Well, you and I are talking about this a little bit in the green room. And um, this is like, I think the make or break moment is having that crystal clear awareness of what do I want to be known for? Okay. And let's talk about what that really means because some people are like, well, I, I don't know, do I need to be known for something? And I believe that we all are known for something, whether you're in, being intentional about it or not, right? And when we learn how to curate that and shape that and make sure that the what we are known for becomes a uh, magnetic quality in the marketplace, it actually activates a very powerful, what I call this authority trifecta. It starts to open up opportunities that, land you top invitations to get on top stages, invitations to get on really uh, hot podcasts. And Shay, I kind of stumbled into this because uh, I'm very active in a lot of communities with really high profile people. And sometimes uh, we would have like these conversations and I'd leave going, I have no idea what they really do. Or I'd go to their social media trying to go, okay, like I this person's really awesome. I really like their energy. They're really impactful, but I don't really get it. And I go to their social media and I'm like, all right, so their social media says this, it says that. I don't know. What do they do? What problem do they solve? Yeah. What what impact are they going to have on my community, on my audiences, on my to my clients? And when we really lean in and get crystal clear about what do I want to be known for? And then we craft this authentic authority um, brand around that that's when we go from oftentimes feeling like this best kept secret to being someone who has this palpable, powerful, uh, desirable result that people go, okay, you want to host a, an event and you want that event to be profitable and to drive enrollments, you need to go to Shea. Mm -hmm. Hey, you want to stand out in a crowded market and you want to not just be on podcasts, but you want to monetize your exposure, you need to go work with Melanie, right? So it creates mm -hmm. this if you want this, you need that person effect. Yeah. Um, you mentioned a word in there. It was like they're, I forget now what the word was, but pretty much like they're hiding behind their authority. Could mm -hmm. you, could you chat a little bit about like, why, <laughs> why? <laughs> I mean, brilliant, brilliant business owners and professionals and, um, there's, they're hiding still on their visibility. And, mm -hmm. and this is at, at multiple levels. Right. Like they can be a five figure, they can be a six figure, they can be a multiple six figure and yet still hiding in some respect. Oh, yeah. Love that. Um, well, and not everybody does this, but I, I started to notice this trend. So I would have people book in a consultation with me because there's, there's curiosity, right? It's like, okay, how do I get to five and six figure months consistently? How do I start to get consistent visibility that's making an impact in my business? And so I'd had these conversations and one, inevitably, if they hadn't already done it, something would emerge like, you know, I know I should be more visible, but I never have time. Mm. I know I should be more visible, but I think I kind of have some kind of block around it because I end up like never having like the clarity of what to do. Or I, I think maybe I have some conflict because maybe I'm a little bit afraid that if I am more visible, I will attract a lot more clients. And I don't know if I'm ready for that. Ooh. And it would start to open up these really interesting conversations. And sometimes even with people who were a guest on my show. So I actually just dropped an episode not too long ago on my podcast about this because I think sometimes we are busy, but we are not 
um, recognizing that busyness is a protection system that's keeping us from putting ourselves out there in a bigger way. And oftentimes the remedy is clarity. Clarity that this is a strategy that can actually make a huge impact on your bottom line and help you, you know, attract more clients that you can become their new hero, or you can actually help them solve a problem they've been struggling with. It can actually be the clarity of, okay, so I have 10 million things I could talk about. How do I pick the thing that I should bring to the podcast, right? And I'm sure, Shay, you've had this happen where you have somebody who has no shortage of passion, no shortage of creativity. And when they come onto the show and they're like talking about 70 different things and you're like, I cannot, what, where are we going with this? What, what, what do you do? Right. <laughs> and so million dollar visibility helps people solve the problem of what should you be known for? What should you, like, how are you going to craft a compelling magnetic topic that not only will get you booked, but gets people to lean in and listen to the interview. Mm. Cause let's face it. There's a lot of noise out there, right? Like you have a really, really successful show. I have a successful show. There's a lot of great content out there, but how do you get people to listen? You have to have compelling magnetic topics that pull people in and go, I have to listen to that today. Mm -hmm. Okay. So audience that's listening right now they're like okay I get it Melanie I'm understanding it that I deserve to like step out no longer be that best kept secret um, working on the mindset for that piece of it now I need to start crafting it what does that look like where do I start is there a framework how do we mm -hmm. how do we start to move forward yeah typically I walk people through uh, like a seven step process it starts with what do you want to be known for what is the um, result that you're known for? What is the uh, experience that you create for people that's a must have experience? What, you know, what's the thing that you do that you, you can uh, impact the lives and make a difference. Uh, and then we have to figure out, okay, so what's the message that goes with it? What is the uh, key topic? Like mine has become uh, the million dollar visibility or million dollar authority brands, depending on the conversation we're having. Um, it might be something like I have a client who she talks about how to move people from uh, being stuck at six figures to being a seven figure CEO. Uh, so she has created a, a really compelling topic around that. I have clients who uh, are very good at like the um, getting people unstuck in their brain and she calls it becoming a super creator. Right. But she was fumbling around with a whole bunch of different ideas. And so getting that what you are known for and what you do the problem you solve or the opportunity you help people achieve connected to a magnetic message is part one really feeling in your bones and in your dna and having it light you up this is the message that i'm you know i'm on fire to go spread it does something going back to the mindset che it actually helps you dissolve resistance it helps you dissolve the I'm too busy. And it when you are fired up about your passion, it's almost like you can't not do the tasks and activities to get yourself out there in a bigger way because you're on fire. You're like, yes, this is this is something that I, I want to be an evangelist around. Well, you're, so yeah, you're excited about it, right? When when we're procrastinating, at least for myself, it's because I'm not jazzed about what I have to do in order to get yeah. it done. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a passion igniter in yeah. a lot of ways. It's like when your passion isn't there, typically you're not in your authentic authority. You're not, you don't have a message that's really your message. You're probably doing something either you saw someone else doing and you're like, yeah, that I could do that. Or you, you've been told this is your thing, but you never really owned it. I went, I'll tell you a story really fast. We know each other a long time. You may have remembered this part of me. <laughs> I went through a process of branding with someone uh, 15 years ago, 14 years ago, something like that. And I, I wasn't really loving my direction I was going. I'd worked with a lot of mentors who were like, do it this way, do it that way. I had copywriters who were like, no, you need to like express like this if you want to make more money and serve more clients. And so I kind of got lost in it all. And I'm not blaming them. I take full ownership of, I just didn't really know who I was. Mm -hmm. I just knew I was good at something. And it wasn't until 
Well, so going back in that one expression, there was an expression of me and my brand that I was so disconnected from. I wanted to hide. I wasn't passionate to get on stages. I didn't want to book people. I, there was a different show I ran back then. I wasn't excited to, to put that show out. I was completely disconnected from any fire or passion to grow. And I was just like kind of finding myself crawling back into this best kept secret hole. Mm -hmm. And of course, what does that do? That affects your cash flow. A lot. <laughs> yeah. And, and you become invisible in a marketplace where I was not very invisible for a very long time. I was one of the top performers, one of the top coaches in my industry. And then what happens, Shay? We start to build this story up in our head. I'm irrelevant. What I do doesn't matter. People don't want what I have, right? So we start to build this whole weird story up based on the fact that at one point, somewhere, somehow, you started to build a business that's disconnected from your authenticity. Yeah. So we're getting that reconnected, getting that authentic spark, getting that clarity, getting all of those pieces in place. I'm getting chills just talking about this because I remember what it was like when all of a sudden all the puzzle pieces started to fire off and it was like the pistons in my car had gotten a tune up and they're like, we're ready. And, and it's easier, think, right? Yeah. Like it it's was much it's, easier. It's so Things much flow. flow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. And so one of the little secret sauces not to open up a, a, a rabbit hole here, but I, I, I want people to understand there's a lot of tools that I use to get that clarity for myself and for my clients. And I'm sure you're familiar with human design. Yes. Um, I use human design as part of that because sometimes we have so much noise out there. There's so much information about how we should get there. And I find going back into what is the most authentic, most aligned version of me from my energetic blueprint can cut through the noise and give clarity. So um, that's one of the secret sauce tools that I use in my process. But then when we get the message in place, now we have to think, now, where does it go from here? So what am I doing with this message? How am I going to showcase my authority and in essence, educate my market? This is who I am. This is the problem I solve. This is my superpower and how my superpower is available to you if you're struggling with this problem. Mm -hmm. So igniting that, um, getting that amplified means let's choose some platforms. One of the easiest and my absolute favorite is being a guest expert on other people's podcasts and shows and stages. Um, that to me is a no brainer place to start. And for some people, they're going to be like uh, the host, right? They're going to step into that full authority and host their own show, host their own podcast. And you choose. There's um, actually what I call the authority trifecta, which is having all three elements, being out there on other people's stages, being able to have a show that you can guide them back to, where you're nurturing a relationship with that listener. And then you have like a really, really powerful um, opportunity to like take them on a client journey to solve a problem. When these three things come together, your authority really gets elevated in the marketplace. And then instead of being one of a bazillion people who do something similar, you become the most logical choice in their minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. And I think it is uh, fascinating that you're utilizing one of your secret sauces of the human design to incorporate into it. I'm just now starting to learn more about it, but it would, it would make so much more sense just to be like, all right, Melanie, this is my human design. This is what's kind of going on. You ask me a number of questions to kind of pull out of me um, what what that message deserves to be as is my, you know, hallucination, so so to speak, <laughs> you know, as I'm assuming of what what it would look and feel like, because good gosh, we were as founders, as CEOs, we're doing a ton of different things, wearing a ton of different hats, trying to bring on team to support us. And if you just need that like support every once in a while from an outside mm -hmm. perspective and utilizing a tool that would help move you forward that much quicker. Yeah. And so a lot of people are like, well, what is human design and how's that work? And I don't want to be labeled, things like that. Right. And so the way I use human design, at least, is I, I call it like the universe's permission slip. It's it's energetically congruent with you in human design they talk about you are just on this big experiment 
where's my alignment? What's not in alignment, right? There's no labels. There's no like you have to do it this way or that way. But what I found happening is when you're like, okay, it could be this, it could be that. There's so much I want to put out in the world. When we go back to the energetic congruency of who you are, where your authority naturally, energetically expresses from you, and you really like dig into it at that level and have that clarity, the things you are wondering about, the things you're curious about, and you're like, I don't know, should it be this or that? All of a sudden fall into place. And there's this crystal clear congruency with probably the message you were always born to put out in the world, or it has been shaped through your experiences and your your results and the work you've done up to now. And so it just clarifies things yeah. instead of being confused or being too many things. And then your audience doesn't really get, what am I known for? What right. is the problem I solve? Yeah. Well, and I mean, I, the way I've utilized it as well in my business is how I can utilize the knowledge of my human design to better communicate with my team and how I communicate and how my team communicates with me, right? When they need something from me, they understand my human design and how to ask for it in mm -hmm. order to get a result out of me, because that's energetically how I normally work. Mm -hmm. And me knowing that about my team, same thing. Like if we're in a networking opportunity situation, one of my team members, I have to invite into the conversation. Now, knowing that I was always like, why are you just on the outskirts? Why are you not coming in and being a part of this? Like what's happening? And now I'm like, oh, okay, great. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's super important that we're now looking at the visibility piece of how to then get the authenticity out there to the world, because that's also then who you're going to be attracting is because you're authentically you. Mm -hmm. And then people see that and go, okay, yep, yeah, Melanie's my gal. Yeah. We often will shrink from more visibility if what we're putting out there in some way, shape or form doesn't feel congruent. And limiting beliefs aside, right? Like, because let's face it, some people are like, I don't know, I've got, I feel like an imposter. And and I've been through imposter syndrome. Have you ever been in imposter syndrome? Yeah. Like okay. we all have. The The key is to not pitch a tent and decide to live there, is to recognize it is a passage as you are really stretching and growing and being more bold and like taking your business and your life to the next level. I was going to say something about the messaging for a minute and the positioning I have a woman that I've been working with around her movement. She's birthing a movement. This is something she's been like passionate about forever, but it's been confusing to people. And she finally like uh, decided to work with me because she says, um, I keep having people tell me I'm too much. Hmm. And if you've ever been told you're too much, right? Too much information, too much energy, too much passion, chances are either A, you're in front of the wrong audiences or B, you haven't learned how to um, articulate your message in a way that the bridge between their world and your world is like exciting instead of daunting. And one of the things we used was her human design. Cause she's like, I don't know, maybe I'm just not meant to do this. And I read her human design. I'm like, Oh my God, you're totally meant to do this. And there was information in there about how to convey her message in a way that people could experience her more clearly. It was like mind blowing. I'm like, yeah, you're born to do this, but here's why it's not working yet. You're out of sync with this one place. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden the light bulbs went off and, you know, her clarity just gave her courage to, to kind of go out and get her message a little bit clearer and more articulate. So I could tell you a bazillion stories about it, but it's fascinating That's to so me. so fun and exciting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love it. I know. I, I get I, chills. It's just We could, we could probably cool. totally geek out on this for <laughs> a while and who knows, we might do another show yeah. about it or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Right. But you know, look, you don't have to know your human design to get million dollar visibility, but you do have to be intentional and you have to be clear. And I know it's like when you're passionate about something, you want to share it everywhere you can. But let's transmute that passion into something that actually people can receive and do something with and decide to take action on. Because passion without strategy is just information overload. It's just, you know, it's just knowledge. It's not going to move people into some state that they can integrate that and make a change in their life that's meaningful and transformational. Right. And that's that's when you end up getting the response of like, oh, that was a really good talk. Thank you. Yes. 
yes. <laughs> You're like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay. You're I'm like, glad. oh my gosh, I have to work with you. I need to get whatever yes. it is that you're offering or, you know, what is the next steps? What does that look like, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. And by the way, there's five types of people we attract from this kind of visibility. One of them is going to raise their hand and immediately work with you. You're designing a message that's most relevant and impactful to them. And there will be other people who come along, but maybe just not immediately. And you don't want to discount them. You don't want to disconnect them, but you are focused on those action takers who they are there because they're waiting for you. They're looking for divine inspiration and that that compelling thing that gets them into uh yes. Do I have time to tell you a quick story about how this works? Yeah, please. Okay. So I've been guesting on other people's shows for years, for at least 12, 14 years since this concept kind of started emerging. And I started to notice a trend that when I was in front of the right audiences, of course, that's part of what we want to do is make sure we're cultivating the right audiences. I would find that a, an episode would air and then like they would be booking a consultation within a few days. I'd say, where did you find me? Uh, oh, I heard you on Jim Palmer's uh, or I heard you on John Lee Dumas or whatever. And I was like, cool. Well, then I started to have my podcast and something really powerful. And this is why I talk about the authority trifecta, because what would happen is I would be a guest on someone's show. And this one time I, I, I a client came in, he booked a session and I asked him, I said, okay, how did you hear about me? He said, well, I was Google searching about podcast guesting. And I ran across a testimonial on someone's site about podcast guesting. And I followed the rabbit trail and I listened to his podcast and your episode on uh, how to get over um, imposter syndrome, I think it was, <laughs> or like how to stop being a best kept secret was so compelling to me. I literally felt you were talking to me. So I went and signed up for everything I could find of yours. And I started listening to your show. I binged you all weekend long. By Monday, he'd booked the consultation. By Tuesday, we had the consultation, or Tuesday or Wednesday, and he said, um, I'm in. It was a it was a high four-figure investment, and he was in. Yeah. So here's, let me unpack what just happened. I, I gained his interest because the topic was relevant, and it was really related to something he was struggling with. I built intrigue through what we talked about. That intrigue is knowing how to talk about what you do in a way that adds value, but also creates desire. And then he was invested so deeply that he was immediately taking action. And instead of just like him going, okay, that's interesting. Let me think about it. He was all in because I'd nurtured the the about, you know, the relationship I'd nurtured him and, and demonstrated my expertise over and over and over again. Now, you don't always have to have your own podcast to do that. I think it's helpful. There's a lot of ways to do it in your client journey. But the importance is, and this is a big mistake people make, Shay, is they think, hey, if I just get them right into a consultation, that's perfect. But most people need a little bit more reinforcement in today's market. Yeah. They're not going to just drop $10,000 or drop $5,000 or even $500 just simply because you're awesome on a show. They're going to need a little bit more development and nurturing and education about how you help people to get them ready to say yes. So I think it's just a really powerful awareness of how it can work when you get all your pieces in place. Yep. And when you're clear on the message and you're clear on who it is you serve and like how that message is amplified, then it becomes a million dollar, you know, visibility structure that mm -hmm. you're being in your authentic self as well. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Like I said, Melanie, we could talk forever, um, but let's go ahead and, and start to wrap it up. What is the best way that people can like learn more about this whole process and next best steps and, and stay connected with you? Yeah. Well, first of all, you can find me on any social platform and I'm happy to connect there, but I want to gift you a resource that I think will help pull all these pieces together. Cause obviously we didn't get to get through all seven of the steps. If you go to melaniebenson.com forward slash powerful impact, 
I have a downloadable guide on how to follow those seven steps in developing and, and generating million dollar visibility for your business. And I lay out exactly what I personally learned for myself, because this was all me kind of making a bunch of mistakes and then figuring out how to do it better and what was actually going to work. Um, you know, the first time I went through this process, I, I generated a million dollars within a uh, about a year and a half of putting it into action. So it's not like the first 30 days is million dollars. This is an exponential growth strategy. There are pieces that you have to keep nurturing to make it all come together. But whether you want to add another 5,000 or you want to add a $50,000 to your month, or you want to add $500,000 to your month, uh, the strategy is scalable, right? So that's where I would start is go through this the framework. If you're really leaning into this and you're like, this is the kind of visibility I want to have, Watch for a little training that comes afterwards. I'll take you through those pieces in uh, one of my master classes. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So we will have that link in the show notes. Definitely go and pick that up right now. My last question for you is what is a takeaway or a memorable note you'd like to leave our audience with? You know, um, having personally gone through being invisible or feeling invisible uh, and working with so many amazing experts who went through a stage of best kept secret. One thing I know for sure, if they can't see you, they can't hire you. If you are not consistently visible in the audiences, in the communities, in the the platforms where your ideal clients are looking or your potential collaborators are searching for people to teach what you do, you're invisible to them. You can do in seven steps, you can become an in-demand guest expert that's generating million dollar visibility when you're intentional and you're consistently visible in the right places. So just remember that you uh -huh. want to be hired. You want to be seen. You have an impact to make. Let's get that dialed in for you. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I also want to thank our audience for joining us on another episode of Creating Powerful Impact. I'm excited for you to take all of these lessons and all of these resources that you've learned here, start implementing them, and create even more impact in your world. Until next time, have an outstanding rest of your day. Thank you so much for listening to the Creating Powerful Impact podcast. If you are a successful coach, speaker, author, or thought leader who would like to be on this program, simply visit creatingpowerfulimpact.com forward slash guest. If you are someone who got something out of this interview, would you please do me a favor and share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on your socials. Also, if you know somebody that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show and include the hashtag creating powerful impact. I love seeing all of your posts and great guest selections. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content to make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and they really mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more about us? Head on over to our website, graceandeaseproductions.com or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Instagram. Just look for Grace and Ease Productions on your favorite platform. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.